Today is the 17th day of uh, Muharram, 1445 years after the Hijrah of the Prophet وسلم, the fourth day of July 2023. The topic of our today's khutbah is we are going to mention some situations, uh, eight situations in which we as Muslims do benefit from the special supplications of the special servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O you Muslims, we should know that Allah the Most High created uh, his servants and there are those who are very close to him meaning the angels Allah the Most High has created them and charged them with some responsibilities which they do carry out without uh, disobedience to Allah the Most High those creatures are the angels Allah the Most High described them in verses of the glorious Quran that they are extremely obedient they do not go against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah the Most High charges angels with so many responsibilities such as uh, safeguarding us from, uh, from, from problems, from diseases, and so on. There are those who have, been, uh, who have been assigned to come and witness our prayers and also mention Amin along with us as we conclude our recitation of Fatiha. There are those who have been, who are in charge of the wombs of our wives in order to take care of the offspring there until our wives deliver safely. If not, there is no way you can expect something, uh, a, a living thing in the womb after heat upon heat and darkness upon darkness. All those are part of the responsibilities being discharged by angels which we do not even uh, know. Uh, part of their responsibilities is that there are those angels whom Allah SWT assigned their duty is to be asking for Allah's forgiveness on our behalf and praying for us for Allah's uh, forgiveness. That's why Allah the Most High says in the glorious Quran, those who have been charged with carrying the arsh, they do glorify the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do believe in him, they do ask for Allah's forgiveness on behalf of those who believe in Allah the Most High, they are saying, O oh Allah, you have encompassed everything in uh, rahmah and, uh, and knowledge. O oh Allah, forgive those who repent and follow your, your, your guidance, and then O oh Allah, save them from the punishment of the fire. We are, being, we are benefiting from this supplication from the, the angels. So, all you Muslims, uh, angels being uh, obedient servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, automatically their prayers are being accepted. Therefore, we should struggle to see that we are benefiting from those situations in which angels are praying for those who are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of such situations is when you happen to be in the first row in the mosque. If you come early, you get first row. Allah the most, the Prophet said that angels do pray for Allah's forgiveness on behalf of those in the first row of uh, Salat. Therefore, come early if you want to occupy the first row, not until the row is filled up and then you struggle that you must squeeze yourself in. No, this is not uh, uh, permissible. That's why the Prophet وسلم, in order to make us achieve that uh, success and prayers of the angels, he said that had it been people know the magnitude of reward that uh, is associated with the adhan calling of prayer and also occupying the first row in salat they would have engaged in voting before they allow anybody to occupy the first row in salat so therefore you ask yourself oh muslim are you among those who are coming to the mosque early and then wait for prayer so that you occupy the first row or you are among those who are habitual late comers in the mosque and then it is only when prayer starts then you run and make sure that you uh, get some raka at least one or two after all the prophet has forbidden us from coming to the mosque while running oh ask yourself most of the time which row in prayer do you normally occupy is it the first row second or the last row so that you will be able to uh, make an amend all you muslims the uh, situation number two is when you finish your salat and you sit down at the place you observe your prayer and of offering uh, adhkar. This situation, the Prophet said that angels would be praying for an individual who observed his salat and he remained there until maybe his evolution gets vitiated. The angel will be saying, Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, have mercy on him. Ibn Battal said that he whose sins have accumulated and he want Allah the Most High to forgive him without any difficulty. Let him 
utilize this opportunity so that you get more and more supplications from the angels because Allah the Most High will accept that. However, unfortunately, many of us, despite the gravity of the sins we are committed, we do come to the mosque very late. We go out early as prayer is terminated as if we are being pursued. You see people as if they are being pursued from the mosque of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very wrong. Without any cogent reason that will make them that they must go out. Number uh, three is when you go to greet, uh, when you go to visit a sick person, either at home or in the hospital. The Prophet sallallahu said that whoever goes out to greet an individual who is sick in the morning, he will be accompanied by 70 angels, 70,000 angels who will be praying for him until until uh, until until in the morning in the evening until morning if it is in the morning until evening that's how it continues however many of us will hear even our neighbors uh, sick until they die then you go and continue lamenting that he has been a very good neighbor and so on after all you miss reward you miss your relationship with him and his uh, uh, family number four is when you visit an individual for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You just prepare yourself to pay a visit to a, a brother or to a sister in the, uh, your sister in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This one also makes Allah the Most High to love and to forgive an individual. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu told us about a man who prepared himself and visited his brother for the sake of Allah. Allah the Most High sent an angel and met him on the way. That angel told him that, where were you going? He said, I was going to visit my brother at so, so, so village. He said, were you looking for any benefit or any gain from him? He said, no, only because he is my brother in Allah and I love him for that. Then that angel told him that I am a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have been commanded to tell you that Allah the Most High loves you because of your love for that your uh, brother. Number five, when you pray for your brother or your sister while he or she does not know, the Prophet said that the dua you offer in favor of your brother while he or she does not know is an automatic dua. As you open your mouth supplicating Allah the Most High will appoint, will assign an angel behind you. As you pray, that angel will say, I mean, you have the same as you pray for him. Tell me if you pray evil for him. You have the same. And since he has not done anything wrong in you, it will remain on you. The, the prayer will backfire. Therefore, you should take note. Those who are praying against their brothers and sisters in their absence, you should know that you are killing none but yourself. You are denying none ways of acceptance of supplication except yourself. Therefore, make sure that when you are praying for people, pray for them in goodness. Especially, you are just praying against him because of envy, because of hatred. He does nothing against you. You are just praying for him. You are doing so against yourself. Number six is those, those who are teaching people goodness, scholars and all others who are teaching people goodness in the way to benefit their life of this soul and the hereafter. Then uh, number uh, seven is when you, uh, you sleep after performing ablution. The Prophet of Allah said that whoever performs ablution before sleeping, Allah will assign an angel who will sleep in between his blanket and his body. Whenever you wake up, that angel will be praying for you saying, Oh Allah, forgive this your servant because he slept after performing an ablution. How many of us are accustomed to that? If we do not do or if we are not doing so, let us try and see that we start from, uh, from today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to benefit from all these uh, prayers. May he subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from his wrath and uh, uh, his anger and the, the uh, negative prayers of the angels. Then lastly, our dear brothers and sisters, we are aware that uh, there was coup in Niger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring peace and uh, uh, stability there and all other Muslim nations. And there was a meeting by ECOWAS uh, president 
and uh, some measures have been taken and they have been given ultimatum of if they did not maybe they did not uh, give power or re reinstate the president there may be there's possibility of a applying force as citizens of this country we are advising our government to reconsider this position to employ dialogue because war is in this so devastating is so catastrophic we are in difficulty of subsidy removal banditry boko haram and others so war will be so devastating and catastrophic to our country to all of us and uh, to all our neighbors so please we are advising that uh, let other measures of dialogue be applied so that the problem will be resolved number two the issue of subsidy removal uh, we have heard the speech of the uh, CNC commander-in-chief uh, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and some measures have been or are going to be introduced in order to uh, make to bring about uh, palliatives to the uh, people to the citizens of Nigeria in order to have ease but uh, some or most of those or all if not all of those palliatives go along with riba which is forbidden for Muslims to uh, benefit from therefore those measures are not going to be of benefit to us we are lodging our appeal and complain that other measures should be introduced so that we as Muslims who are also citizens, we also stand to benefit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah the most accept from us. Wa faqadi Allahu wa iyaakum lil fawzi bi hadhi al-halati thamaniya khalisatan li wajhi al-kareem. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana taqabal minna inna kanta sami al-alim. Wa tuba alayna ya mawlana inna kanta wa burahim. Wa la khawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim. Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzati amma isfoon. Wa salamun ala al-musaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.